But those who would seek to glory in earthly things of the flesh having been addressed, Paul turns to the only one in whom we should glory. And as members of the church, which is his body, we should never glory in the flesh, works of the law, or any other man-made system. Rather, we should dwell on the heavenly glory of the risen, ascended, glorified, and seated Lord Jesus Christ. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Galatians 6 verses 14 to 15. Let's take a look. Paul frequently uses God forbid to draw attention to and thereby teach major conclusions in his epistles. In Galatians alone, he uses God forbid three times and the student of the word would do well to pay attention. Here in Galatians 6 verse 14, having addressed how they of the circumcision were glorying in the works of the flesh, Paul says, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, per the prophetic preaching of the twelve and the little flock, the cross of Christ was a thing of shame upon Israel. But per Paul's gospel, Romans 16 verse 25, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, was great glory. And the student of the word will ask why. Why is Israel's demand of Rome that Christ be crucified and the fulfillment of same something in which to glory? You need only continue reading in Galatians 6 verse 14 where you find Paul saying he would glory only in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So not only is Christ crucified, but in simple belief by grace through faith in Christ's faith, Christ's crucifixion becomes ours. And it is a two-way deal, for both the world is crucified unto me, and also I am crucified unto the world. And thus via rested belief the works of the flesh are dealt with, as Paul continues regarding such that, In Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. Such works of the flesh are meaningless for those united with Christ in the new creature. Example, a direct reference to the church, which is his body, of which all believers are members. Don't miss this. For when the body of Christ, the new creature, began to be formed at the salvation of Saul the persecutor, God unveiled and began the mystery work of Holy Spirit, all who would come to simple belief of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. By grace through faith, Holy Spirit baptized into the new creature, the body of Christ performing a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ's circumcision. Colossians 2 verse 11, such that physical circumcision was no longer of any importance. Believer, glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, and embrace your membership in the new creature the body of Christ, where works of the flesh mean absolutely nothing.